Okay, so in this video, we're going to install screen copy. Now screen copy allows you to display, control and record the screen of an Android device. But unlike other apps that accomplish this, screen copy doesn't watermark your recordings or limit the frames per second resolution or duration of your recordings. Any limitations in frames per second or resolution are that of your hardware and not arbitrarily imposed by screen copy. So all links that you will need to follow along with this video are in the description below. So let's just go and get started. So the first page you need to load up is the screen copy GitHub page. So load that up into a browser and scroll on down. And if we look at this section here, which says get the app, you can see that if you're running Ubuntu 20.04, you can install it from the repositories. And there's also an option of a snap package, which I have had very limited success with. So the only option for me to install this on Ubuntu 18.04 is to just build the app manually. And it's actually really simple to build this. If you are running Ubuntu 20.04, feel free to skip ahead in the video to where we actually use screen copy. So let's go ahead and click on this link and set up screen copy to work over our wireless network so we don't need to use a USB cable. But let's just get started building this. So click on this link here, so build the app manually. And you wanna just scroll on down and we're gonna start by installing some runtime dependencies and then the client build dependencies. So we can just copy and paste these into a terminal. So let's do that. So I'm just gonna open up a terminal and I'm going to change directory into my bin directory. So cd bin. So it's just in my home directory. Um, you can do this wherever you want. It doesn't really matter. I'm just doing this just to keep it clean. So let's start by installing the runtime dependencies. So copy this and paste it into your terminal. Now you can paste into your terminal by holding control shift and pressing V, or you can just right click and click paste. It's totally up to you. So hit enter, enter in your password. And that only took a few seconds for me because I already have these dependencies installed. But for you, if you don't have any of these dependencies installed, it might take a little bit longer. So just pause the video and wait for that to finish. The next thing that we need to do is copy this here. So copy the client build dependencies. And again, paste that into your terminal, hit enter. And wait for that to finish. And we're not going to bother with the server build dependencies as we're going to download a pre-built version of the screen copy server later on. So let's just scroll down. And the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to clone this repository with git. So git clone this link here. Let me just bring that to the top, paste that in, hit enter. And that's done. So if we ls, you can see we have a screen copy directory. So if we just cd into that, what we're going to do now is actually download the server component of screen copy. So the way that screen copy works is you have a client application of screen copy that runs on your computer, so your laptop or desktop, and you have a screen copy server that gets sent to your phone or tablet whenever you start up screen copy to record your screen or control your device. And what happens then is that application gets loaded into your device's memory and it deletes itself. So it doesn't leave anything on your Android device. So before we actually download that server component, which we need now, we're going to make a directory in our screen copy directory and we're gonna call it SCR, so screen CPY dash server. And we're gonna CD into that. So, just use tab autocomplete there, hit enter, and we are now in our screen copy server directory. So if we just go back to our web browser, what we're going to do is scroll down and we're going to right click. So underneath pre-built server, so this section here, we're going to right click on this link and copy link address. Come back over to your terminal and you're gonna type in wget space, paste in that link and hit enter. And that's done. So if we ls now, you can see we have that screen copy server application. 
And now let's just check the SHA-256 hash. So copy this hash here. And we're going to use echo, two parentheses, inside of that, paste in that hash, put a space in, and then a dollar sign and parentheses. And within these, just type ls star. So we're going to basically just get this file name here. And we're going to redirect that to a file, and let's just call it sum.txt hit enter and if we just cat sum you'll see what's in there now so we've got the hash followed by the name of the file and to check to make sure that our screen copy server wasn't damaged when we downloaded it what we can do is type in sha256 sum dash c and the name of our text file that contains the hash in the file name so sum.txt hit enter and if everything went OK, you'll get an OK. If you don't get an OK, re-download screen copy and rerun this step. But now that that's done and we're done with this sum.txt file, we can just remove it. So rm sum.txt. And we can see the backup out of this directory. So now we're in our screen copy directory. We can start to build screen copy because we have all of the dependencies and all of the components. So screen copy uses the Meson build system. So if you're familiar with using make, it's a similar kind of pattern to what the way that you would use it. So we're going to copy this first and we're going to paste that into our terminal and we're going to delete this last bit. So where it says pre-built server, we need to give it the path to where our pre-built server is that we downloaded. So that's in screen copy and you can use tab autocomplete here and just press tab now. So this is the pre-built server that we downloaded. That's all done. Hit enter and let Meson configure the build. And that's done. So the next stage is to actually build screen copy. So if we just copy this line here, just copy that, paste it in, hit enter. And we're done. And finally, we need to install our version of screen copy. So copy the last line, paste that in, hit enter, and that's all complete. So we can check to see if screen copy is now installed by typing in screen copy. So SCR CPY, hit enter, there it is, it's working. And as I don't have any devices connected yet, we get this error message, but that's all fine. And let's just make sure that the server application was put in the right place. So we're just going to copy this first bit here. We're just going to type in ls, paste that in, hit enter. And yes, the server component of screen copy has been put in the right place. So now what we can do is cd up out of our screen copy directory and we can remove it because we don't need this anymore. So we can just type in rm-r screen copy, hit enter, and then just yes enter yes enter yes enter should have used dash y on that but oh well and that's been removed so we can see the out of our bin directory as well so i'm just going to go back to my home directory and screen copy is installed now so the next thing that we need to do to hook up our phone is actually grab our phone unlock it and you want to go into settings by dragging down from the top press on the cog scroll down to about phone and you want to scroll all the way down to the bottom and where it says build number just keep tapping on that seven times and you will get a message that says you are now a developer so you have unlocked developer options once you've done that back out of about phone so just get out of that click on system so tap on system and then advanced and scroll until you see developer options. So if you tap on developer options, you want to scroll down and make sure under debugging that you have USB debugging enabled. So you can see I have that blue tick and it is enabled. So now our phone is configured. Before we plug it in, we want to type in ADB space devices. Press enter and you'll get this message. So it says list of devices attached, nothing. 
daemon not running, starting a new one. So it started a new ADB server. So now what we can do is we can plug our phone in. So mine's plugged in now and we can type in the same thing again, press enter and you can see I have an unauthorized device. So there's a message that has popped up on my phone screen. So just make sure your phone's unlocked when you do this. And it gives you the computer's RSA key fingerprint and it tells you what it is. Do you want to allow or deny this? So just press allow. And if we do that again, you can see that we have changed from unauthorized attached device to device. So to use screen copy now, now that our device is connected, we can just type in SCRCPY, press enter. And after a few seconds, we have a view of our phone screen. And we can control it with our mouse and use the keyboard. So let's just go to Google. Let's just type in a search term. I don't know. Um, and that all works. So let's just get rid of this. So I'm just going to close this down now. So now we've established that we can connect to our phone using USB. We're going to set it up so that we can use our phone over our network. So the first thing that you need to make sure of is that your phone's Wi-Fi is on and is connected to the same network that your computer is connected to. You'll also need to grab the IP address of your phone. So the simplest way to do that is to, again, go back into your settings. So click that cog, go to network, press on your Wi-Fi network, just tap there and select that network. Click on advanced, scroll down, and you'll see your IP address listed there. So let's just get out of that. Let's just clear the screen. So with our phone connected over USB, we need to type in ADB space TCP IP space, and then a port number for our phone to accept connections on. So the default one that everyone uses is four five. So it's five, 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 press enter and it says restarting in TCP mode. So if we type in ADB devices again, we're getting unauthorized. And if you look at your phone screen, you have allow USB debugging, just press allow. And let's run that again. Device is authorized now. So now what we can do is we can actually connect to our phone over the network. So you wanna type in ADB space connect, the IP address of your phone. So for me, it's 192.168.1.5 colon and the port number. So it's 5555, press enter, and it's now connected. So if we type in ADB devices again, you'll see that we have these two devices and we're getting that our wirelessly connected phone is unauthorized. If we do that again, just give it a second. So if you're still getting unauthorized next to the network connection of your device, unplug USB and then type in ADB devices again. And we're still getting unauthorized. Let's just try and run screen copy. And we're getting this error. So this sometimes happens. Let's just try and reconnect back to this device. So we're gonna type in ADB connect the IP address, so 192.168.1.5, colon, four fives, press enter, and it says we're already connected. So if we type in ADB devices again, we're still unauthorized. So what we need to do is go into settings on our phone, and system, advanced, developer options, scroll down, and revoke USB debugging for all computers you've previously authorized. Press OK, and let's just go back. So let's try that one more time. ADB devices still unauthorized, let's disconnect. So disconnect 192.168.1.5. So we have now successfully disconnected from that. And let's try and reconnect again. So connect and we get the prompt to allow. So press allow on your phone screen. 
And now if we type in ADB devices, you can see that we are now connected and authorized. So the reason why this happened is I was already connected to my phone over USB and I was trying to set up a network connection to the phone, but because it's the same phone and two connections, there was some confusion and this happens. So if this does happen to you, that's probably one of the reasons. Just go through and revoke USB access and then try and reconnect. So now if we just type in screen copy, as I only have one device connected at the moment, I don't need to specify which one I want to connect to. I can just type in screen copy. And if I press enter, you'll see that it is now working over the network. So let's just close this for now. And I'm just going to CD back into my bin directory, just so this is clearer. And we're going to reopen up the GitHub page because I haven't actually shown you how to record, just how to remotely connect to your device. So if we just scroll to the top of this page here, so this is the build page, we want the actual screen copy page. So click that and scroll down. And Underneath features, it has a full description of all of the things that you can do with screen copy. So reducing size, limit the frame rate, cropping, recording. So let's try this. So if we just copy this and let's just paste that here. So we're connected over Wi-Fi and we are recording. And you can see I can still operate my device. So let's open something up. Okay, let's get rid of that. And let's just close this window now and have a look for our recording. So there we go, file.mp4. So let's open that up. And it's opened up on my other screen. So let me just bring that over here. There we go. Okay, so one last thing, your ADB server sometimes might malfunction. So in order to kill it, you want to type in ADB space kill dash server, and it should return like this. So if we just run ADB devices, you'll see that we now have successfully started up a new server. So sometimes when you run ADB kill server, it doesn't actually work. So what you will need to do is kill the ADB server process itself. So to do that, you can just type in PSAUX, pipe that into grep for ADB. So I'm just gonna make this a little bit smaller just so that it all fits onto one line. So you can see that this first one here is actually our ADB server. The second entry here is just where we were grepping for ADB. So the process ID that we need to kill is this one here. So we can just copy that and we can just type in kill and paste in that process ID. Hit enter and we run that again. You'll see it's now disappeared. So we have successfully killed our ADB server. And now to create a new server, we can just type in ADB start dash server or we can actually just type in ADB devices. And as there isn't a server running, ADB will just start one on our behalf, but let's just do this. 
and type in ADB devices. We don't have anything attached, so let's just connect wirelessly again. So ADB connect, and I'll just connect to my phone. Press enter, and I'm now connected to my phone. So if I type in ADB devices again, you'll see that it shows up and we can use screen copy. And there we go. So that's just what to do if your ADB server is not responding. And that's brought us to the end of this video. So I hope you found it useful and thanks for watching. Goodbye.